back. I'm Michael. You are listening to The Michael Dresser Show. Our guest, Slavica Bogdanov. I hope I hope I said that right. Did I do that? Did I pronounce Yes, he, almost. Okay. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 t- tell me how to say it. Slavika Bogdanov. Ah, Slavika Bogdanov. I've got it. Is a success life coach and has yes. published over 25 books, including three bestsellers, whose expertise has helped thousands worldwide. She came to the United States with the intention to help as many people as possible to live life to the fullest, experience abundance, prosperity, riches, and happiness, and being healthy. And the book is From Bankrupt to Wealthy, Achieving Financial Success, No Matter Where You Are Financially. And welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Michael. Oh, and thank you so much for being here. You know, when it really comes down to it, you know, you were raised in Paris and you came from a European family. They were entrepreneurs, okay? And, and they believed in working. Then you moved to Canada and you've been around a lot of places. Do you find a commonality of what the topic is, you know, when people want financial success, uh, no matter where you are financially. Are people, people, if you get away from uh, uh, cultures, cultures, when you get away from politics and, and et cetera, when you come down to it, are we all the same? I believe we are. Yeah. We all have the same basic foundation for wanting happiness. Uh, we all are all the same in wanting success. We are all the same in wanting more money. We're all the same in wanting more freedom. I think we're all the same at the base. Yeah, and I think. And I'm so actually, I'm so thankful that I I came to America and Florida because I think this is where we get the most um, of this energy of success and freedom and prosperity and everything is possible kind of mentality. Oh, absolutely. Now, the three pillars that you talk about, the first one is self-esteem. Very important because mm-hmm. in today's world, in this very fast-paced world, there are a tremendous amount yeah. of people who have lost that self-esteem. So it's a recapture. Yeah. It's almost like hitting the reset button on your life, and that's where it begins. Definitely. I believe, actually, that actually I'm not the only one to believe. It is proven that 80% of people lack in self-love, self-esteem, that people lack in believing that they are worth having more. And, you know, you only get anywhere where you are right now in life, wherever you feel you are, you're getting what you feel you deserve. And it's really difficult to accept at first, but that's what people should understand. If you look around you and you hate what you're having, well, (laughs) That's what you think you deserve. And guess Maybe who called you're not it, yeah. loving yourself enough, but that, that, that is it. No, realistically, and if, if life is bad and you're going through all of those things, you called it. So which means if you called it, you can call something else. And when you make that shift, mm-hmm. things have to change. Now, the other side of that is goal setting, which I think is extremely important. If you do not define mm-hmm. your destination, how are you going to get there? Exactly. Well, your mind works like the GPS. So if you don't know the address, the destination address, and the point of location where you are right now, your mind cannot make a roadmap from where you are to where you want to be. So you better know where you're going, and you better know where you are, so your mind can make the roadmap to get to where you want to go. Yeah, also the third one, which I think is extremely important, and I have a tough time with this one, it's called time management. All of a sudden... (laughs) There are so many things going on. You, you turn around at the end of the day and said, where to go? And I didn't accomplish everything I wanted. Yeah, I think time management is the art of saying no. Um, it's saying a lot of no's to things that don't matter and saying big yeses to things that are really important. And people lose, I think, their lives going saying yeses to emergencies that will never be relevant to long-term plans and never saying really a big yes to things that are important on the long term, but that might not really seem important today, but you need to make that little step today in order to get that big plan made up tomorrow. Now, by the way, I'm going to go back to something we were talking about when you said if you're miserable, basically you called it, and uh, you also encompass the law of attraction. The law of attraction is exactly Mm -hmm. that. If you feel good inside, that's what you're going to attract. 
if you feel bad inside, that's what you're going to attract. And I, re- I really believe it takes just a simple shift. But the problem with the shift mm-hmm. is most people don't know the mechanics of making the shift. Ha, yes. And I'd love people to understand this. This is so important. If someone would kind of understand this, okay, imagine you are in a, ca- uh, you're a caveman and you're in a cave. And you have to go out. You won't like going out. And that's how our brain has been made, is never going out of our cave, never going out of our comfort zone. But if you create another comfort zone, another cave, and you tell, tell the caveman, this is better, go there, he'll run to it. So you need to use a lot of tools to create another comfort zone in your brain so that you can make that shift possible and easier because if you don't, you are always be, will be stuck in this wheel that it's just too scary to go out. It's just too frightening to change. I, I don't want to do it. I have so many reasons not to. But if you find so many other ways to get around that, then you'll really speed up to that new level of achievement or well, success. Absolutely. Somebody said this within the last couple, three weeks, and it stayed with me. And and what I heard was life really begins at the end of your comfort zone. That's really where the key is, you know, and and we, uh, that old adage about thinking outside the box. And we all pretty much think Mm -hmm. think the same thing, you know, and mix it up a little bit, but it comes out the same. But the real definition of thinking outside the box is thinking thoughts you didn't think you could think. And I think that's really where the key is. And when you talked about, you go back to, you know, caveman, we still have that, 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 that survival mechanism within ourselves. It's unconscious, but that fight or flight mechanism. If you see something that you, that, that, uh, you, you need to fight, it's going to scare you, you'll fight to survive. And that could be going out and making the best of yourself that it is. That could be frightening. Yeah, and p- most people, you know, they, have, they don't understand how the brain functions. That's what I teach. The brain is like a computer. And if you get a brain, like I know because I hate brand new computers, but if you get a brand new computer and you don't know its language, you're done. You're never going to be accessing your files. You're never going to be accessing new programs. It's a whole problem. And that's how most people work with their brains. They just don't know how to program their brain. They have all programming and they're stuck with it and they don't know how to rewire that programming. You know, they don't know how to defragment the brain. They don't know how, how to clean up the old, you know, memory and put on new. They, they just don't know how to sw- change disks or things like that. And, and the brain really functions like a brain, like a computer, just much better than a computer but we just when you learn those uh, programming messages that you can send everything becomes like so easier in life but there's a there's another step to that you know the the uh uh the brain and the unconscious mind really is what we're really dealing with here it speaks in a language of pictures and symbols once an image gets into that unconscious mind it takes it on as a goal to achieve it can't distinguish between fact or fantasy and learning mm-hmm. the language mm-hmm. of the mind is an imagery because that's what it understands, not the language that we're speaking now. Every word you speak has a corresponding mental image. So it's getting the images that are recognizable. And not all. Go ahead. But not, not, not only image, mind understand words because we think in words. We don't think image is not image, it's emotions. Emotions link to images. We think in, in words and emotions link to words. So we have some words we say and some emotions that are linked to the words we say. And the images come later, all combined to the emotions and words. But I've transformed lives of people, even with huge problems I, I can't describe because they're too long to describe, but people that have had Terrible suffering just by changing the words, and the emotion linked to the words, not even the, the uh, image, images. Because when you think, 
if you don't have a huge vocabulary, you're going to have very little uh, ability to succeed because your imagination will be very shortened by the amount of words you have. So everything is linked to the words. Okay, but the word, the the word, let me say, the word, the word is tied to a recognizable image. Here, let me ask you a question. If I say chamber around, R-O-U-N-D, chamber around, do you know what that means? Uh, (laughs) Nothing. Uh, Chamber of round? Chamber around. Yeah. Do you know what that means? No. Okay. Now, if I say put a, a, a round is a bullet and a chamber is where you put it. But if I say put a bullet in a gun, do you have an image? I have an image of a gun. Yeah, you put a bullet in a gun. See, and that, that's where the key is. It's got to be a recognized, the words have got to tie to a recognizable image. And the image, obviously, is with the emotions and the rest of it. And that's really what the key is. So now you know you no, have an image. No, I, I, don't, I don't agree. I don't agree because in, in like, images of gun and all that, that's easy. But when you go to images of wealth, money, empowerment, um, self-esteem, those are words that, that have their, you know, so many different images for different people, but... People, everybody relates to the world, to the word self-esteem or to the world words, I love myself, for example. I love myself doesn't have really an image, except the image of, wow, I love myself. I feel good about myself. Yeah, but how many Feeling people good believe about that? Yourself how many people doesn't believe, have really an image. Wait, 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 Slavika, how many people believe that? That's really, that, that's the people that you work with, the ones who don't believe they love themselves because they're not going to get all of the things that you're talking about. But yeah, what, but when they understand that they need to love themselves and, and accept themselves to, to accept the world that they live in and to accept more, then everything changes for real. I think that's a major pillar is to love yourself. You can't have more in your life if you don't love yourself. Um, by the way, I totally agree. If I don't love me, how am I going to love you? That's really what it comes down to. And how the universe is going to love you if you don't love you? Yeah. Like, really. But I would also walk down the street and ask uh, 20 people what love means, and you're going to get a lot of different answers. No, I understand, but it's not necessarily an imagery, in my opinion. It's more a feeling. Like, you might not... Not getting even in, uh, even in um, a blind person may know what love is without seeing it ever. It's a feeling of being feeling relieved, feeling at plenty, feeling like everything's going well. I think that's what success means. It's when you feel like when you have it all, <clears throat> like I have it all right now. When you have it all, y- y- you're just happy no matter what happens. It's like you just feel good about anything. And that's what people seek, is feeling happy no matter what, right? Oh, sure. But that can be taught. Actually, that should be taught before. People should feel happy no matter what before they get anything. Because <laughs> that's, that's how the, the wheel spins, really. Well, I, I believe that happiness, happiness is embedded in every person, every human being out there. What happens is you get stressed and it gets buried and you don't recognize it until some of that stress goes away. So when you really come down to it, it's not something that you learn. It's something that you innately have. Uncover. Uncover. Yeah, Yeah, uncover. Sure, we're saying the same thing. Now, we're just about out of time. I could talk to you about this all night long. So let me ask you this. Is there a website we can find you and also find the books? Yes. So if you go to bankrupttowealthy.com, you'll find uh, information about the latest of my book. I've written more than 25. This this one really is the epiphany of the last decade. So I think it's going to help a lot of people not only get wealthy in riches in, in terms of abundance of money, but abundance in every aspect of their living and also feel happy in the journey, which is very important. Absolutely. And by the way, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Michael, so much for having me. It's really a pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. I hope we have a, a, another conversation at a time because oh, this was fun. I'd love to. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks. And the old-